In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of Adobe Captivate Draft for the iPad. Okay, let's get started here. First off, let me answer the question of storyboarding. Why do we as instructional designers storyboard? Well, consider the time and cost associated with creating an e-learning project. I spend anywhere from two to three months building a course from analysis all the way to implementation. So um, you can imagine that if you were to get it wrong, let's say you designed an entire course without getting feedback from your stakeholder, from your client, um, how frustrating that would be two or three months later, uh, only to find out that uh, um, that you completely miss the point. Storyboarding saves me that time because I storyboard a course, I'm confident that my work will receive final approval with only a small amount of revision. I know I have captured the vision of my client and up until now storyboarding is something that I've done sitting at my desk and using tools like Microsoft Office to create my client's vision. That's where Adobe Captivate Draft comes into play. As an iPad app, I can do my storyboarding anywhere. So let's walk through the tool and see what it can do. So first of all, I'm going to launch the Captivate Draft uh, application by clicking on the icon, and you're presented with this page here. There is a, uh, a sample uh, created already, so we can actually play through this and actually see uh, what this is all about. Um, but you know, like, let's just start playing it. Let's just see how that looks. So, title page, pretty straightforward. So, here's what you can do. Let's just pause this for a moment here. Uh, obviously, create e-learning content on the go with your iPad. I love that. I love the fact that I could grab my iPad, I could go out to the park, I could, uh, you know, be on vacation, sitting at a beach somewhere and designing e-learning. Like to me, you know, even though a laptop is fairly portable, it's still cumbersome. It still weighs like, you know, a, a couple of pounds. You know, the iPad, um, the iPad will fit in the, the big pocket on the side of a pair of cargo shorts, you know. Um, the other advantage that Captivate Draft offers is the ability to send your content out for review, right? So a lot of times the reason that we use a tool like Microsoft Word or PowerPoint to storyboard is because everyone has it. Uh, it'd be great to send Captivate, um, but you know, not everyone has Adobe Captivate. So this is a great, they've set this up so that you can send out your e-learning for review, the, the rough first storyboard draft. You can add all your text, media, quiz, and elements, and we'll show you some of that as well, and export it to the cloud and refine it further using Adobe Captivate. So this is really a good interim tool. Um, the rest of this presentation kind of goes through some of the basics of, of how you do this, uh, which we'll do as well. Let's, let's actually exit from this presentation and go back. So I'm going to tap the four little square icon at the uh, top there to return me to that uh, that starting page and I'm going to click on create a new project. So here's where you can uh, start to build your course. Think of this as your title slide, your first slide. If you're not sure what to do, click the or tap the uh, question mark in the upper right hand corner there and it will give you this little job aid on all of the drawing gestures that you can do. So if you want a square, draw a square. If you want a triangle, some of these are pretty intuitive. Um, a line is a line, image is an X. So what that's going to do is it's going to create a placeholder for an image. Let's do an image right off the bat. So I'm just going to draw an X across the screen and Adobe Captivate Draft recognizes that that is an image and of course I can place it where I want on the screen here. Um, you can use the selection handles to uh, resize the image. So whatever size image is appropriate for what you have in mind in your course. Oh, I drew a line there by accident. We won't need, we won't need that, so I'm just going to undo that. Go back here, and I'm going to use the selection handles to make a nice tall image there. And we'll just move that around. 
So let's go back to our little job aid here. Um, if we wanted to do text, you can see in the bottom left there, there is a squiggly line from top to bottom or from bottom to top. And uh, let's just see how that works. So I'm just going to draw a squiggly line. And that should be able to recognize, yep, there's text. So I can tap this now and uh, should be able to make some changes there. So I'll just type in course title. And I know it throws it up at the top of the screen, just something to get used to because of your keyboard. But if I lower the keyboard, it should return to that side there. Um, when you're in this edit mode, you'll see that this uh, bunch of icons to the left here show up and you can actually do some of the placement of objects from there. Um, if I select the course title, um, you can see I've got some options here. Uh, first of all, I can choose what font I wish, so maybe I'm more of a Helvetica fan and I can choose the size and you'll see if I just drag with my finger up this little scale I can change the size of that text I can even change the color at this stage so if I know that you know a particular organization I'm doing work for has a particular color branding we can uh, we can do that as well so let me just uh, resize this will make it a little smaller there We've got our image and we want to create um, a new slide at this point. So all you do is you press the plus button on the right hand side of your page there and that creates a new slide. So here we might want to do a video. So let's go back to, um, to this mode here where we're going to do some stuff. And if I want to If I want to add a video to this, I'm going to use, well, let's take a look at the job aid again. You see video is in the second row and on the right hand side there. It's sort of like a play button. So let's do that. I'll just do a big play button right there in the middle. And now, of course, I can resize it again using the selection handles. This is going to be a big video on screen. Uh, no problem there. And I can leave it like this for now. I can say that the video is coming. But one of the things I can do is that if I bring up the edit tools, uh, which again, just to remind you there is the little green button on the left there. If I bring that up and uh, with the item selected, I can either do one of two things. If you look on the right hand side there, I've got the option to actually take a camera shot. And let's do that for fun. We'll just give uh, Captivate Draft uh, permission to use my camera here. And I'll just turn this around and we'll record a short video of me speaking right here. <laughs> Hi guys, there's my ceiling fan. And that's good enough. So we'll use that video and that's now in the course itself. There we go. So. Um, it's really versatile that way if you're out in the field and you're you're let's say you're literally at your analysis stage and you're you're being shown by your your subject matter expert um you know some some tools of the trade or something you can capture that on video put it in your storyboard and decide later whether it's going to be actually a part of your course or not um but that's kind of fun that's kind of neat so the uh, let's do a new slide at this point here and if you actually drag out the, the, the plus button on the right hand side there, you'll actually be able to see all of your slides plus the new slide that we've created. You can add additional blank slides from this page, but you can also add a question slide. So if you decided you wanted to test people on the knowledge of the uh, video you just shot, you can click add a question slide. And then you can see across the bottom there, I have a choice between true, false, multiple choice, matching, and sequence. And in the case of multiple choice, matching, and sequence, 
I can press the Q icon on the left hand side of the page to make changes to the number of answers. So the default for multiple choice, for example, is two. If I press that um, on the side there, I'm given a little scroll bar again, and I can increase the number of answers to, let's say, five. And then, of course, I could edit those, type the question at the top, type all the answers in, and so forth. So that's pretty much, um, I think, it, it for today. We've got uh, a nice little overview here. We can preview the course that I've just done right from the top bar there. There's my video, so we could play that if we wanted to. Not sure that's going to work over AirPlay, but... Uh, and then to our next slide, and I think we have a final slide with a multiple choice there. There we go. So let's return back to um, the edit mode. And maybe let's go back to look at one other thing that I'd like to show you. And that's the uh, ability to do uh, some branching. So let's get back off to, let's get back to the beginning of this course. If I wanted to create some branching options, of course, you can see what the branching currently looks like by pressing the the little symbol that looks like a hierarchy in the upper right or the top center right and you'll see your course represented as a series of pages if I tap on that I see all the individual slides across my course as I've built it let me exit from that we're going to add something here if you take a look at the toolbar on the left hand side of your page you'll see a little star with a blue box behind it if I press that and I tap somewhere on this page, it gives me the option to create a hotspot, which then can jump to any of those slides. So let's say I wanted to jump straight to the quiz. So now what we have, let's exit from, from the hotspot creation there, and go back to the hierarchy view, you can see that there's now a branching scenario in this case here, and of course it shows all the remaining other slides there. So as you can imagine, it's going to be rough. It's not a complete course when you're when you're finished with it in this tool. But the great part about this is that I can now um, save this up into the cloud and I can share it with uh, with you know all all the subject matter experts and stakeholders that I might need to share it with. So here I'm back at the, the main Adobe Captivate draft page. I've exited from that. And I'm going to tap that course I just created. Sorry, I should have said long press on it. And you can see I have several options. I can email it. I can send it to the cloud. I can copy it. You know, if you wanted to save a copy at this point, then make some changes, that would be a good option. And um, I, of course, can throw it in the garbage. And we'll do that. We've got the original here. Let's long press on it again. And uh, we'll see about saving it to the cloud. It's saved to the cloud. This is your creative cloud account with Adobe. But I can also send it off for review. So we could send in the, uh, put in the email addresses of all the, um, all the, the users that you want to take a look at this and obviously uh, select an expiry date for that review as well. Because obviously you don't want them reviewing it past a certain date. Gives, gives your uh, reviewers a deadline as well. Um, but more importantly, um, you know, make sure they're not reviewing the wrong version of the course. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to exit from that there. That's just a little overview. How you can use this tool is entirely up to you. But again, the, the real, to me, the real benefit is being able to sit at a park bench or, you know, grab a comfortable spot in your office away from your desk, away from Microsoft Office and all of these tools that just are so corporate. Um, th to me, this is a, a great opportunity to have a creative tool that you can use when you want, where you want, and how you want. So 
Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful, helpful, interesting, fun, entertaining, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.